What's up everyone, in this video we're talking about how to render payload CMS blocks on the front end using Next.js. Before we get started though, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss when I release a video about payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you'd like the code that I use in this video, there's a link to the repo in the description. Now, let's dive in. In a previous video, we talked about how to create blocks in Payload CMS that allow you to have flexible layouts in your pages. Now we're going to talk about how to use Next.js to bring those blocks to life. If you don't know how to create a block yet, I highly recommend going back to watch my video on creating blocks before watching this video. Currently, we only have two blocks built a content with media block and a table of contents block. So let's use those two blocks to get something showing on our Next.js front end. First, let's organize our blocks folder a little bit. Right now we have a blocks directory with a table of contents folder and a config file. So we're going to, in our blocks directory, create a new content with media directory and then add the content with media TypeScript file. And then we're going to rename this to be config.ts and we're not going to change the name of the constant. Now in our content with media, we're going to add a new TypeScript file that we'll call component. And this is gonna be a TSX file. So we'll add that there and then we'll add another one down in our table of contents directory as well. The component.tsx file is where we're going to build our front end component for this block. The last thing we'll add before moving forward is a new tsx file we'll call index.tsx and we'll add that to our blocks directory. And this is where we're going to have our render blocks function. Let's start with our content with media block. Open up the component.tsx file for your content with media component. And then we're going to export a new function that we're going to call content with media block. We know from our content with media config that we need the props to be content, image, and text position. We'll also want to set the types of these props to help us fill out the new component. And the best way to do that is to set your blocks interface name property. So let's go over to our content with media block. Under slug, we're gonna type in interface name and then type in content with media as the interface name. If you wanna do this for the table of contents as well, you can do that before running generate types, but I'm gonna go ahead and just generate the types now. And you do that by typing in payload generate types. And this is going to create our content with media type. After you run payload generate types, you can then import content with media from payload types. So I can go over here and we're going to import content with media from payload types. So now we can go in here, set our props to be block and then assign content with media type to that block. We'll start with an if statement that checks if our blocks text position is left. If it is, we're going to return a section that's going to hold a div for our content. And we're also going to have a next image component. Now, a couple of things need to happen for this image component. First, we're going to wrap it in a conditional check and make sure that the image exists. Next, we're gonna make sure that the type of that image is actually an image and does not equal string. If all of that is true, then we can render the image using our block.image.thumbnail URL. Typically you would set up your own file path with a media bucket, but this will work for now. And then for our alt text, we'll need to use block.image.alt. And then underneath that, we'll add the width prop using block.image.width. And we're setting some default values as well. And then lastly, the height prop, which will be block.image.height and we'll just set a default value for that as well. So that's it for the image component. 
Right now, we don't have a way to render our lexical content on the front end. So instead of importing the default lexical serializer, we're gonna add an HTML converter feature to our content field. In the next video, we'll go over how to create your own lexical rich text serializer to actually render lexical content, including blocks. But for now, let's go over to our content with media config. And in our lexical editor, we're going to import the HTML converter feature. Now my IDE does this automatically, but if yours does not, you'll wanna make sure that you import the HTML converter feature from rich text lexical in the payload package. Underneath our rich text field here, we need to then add lexical HTML as a field. And we're going to put in the field name of our rich text field. Then we're gonna pass in some props that takes the name option and this is the name of what you want your field to be named. And so I'm just gonna type in content HTML. Now we can generate types again, and this is going to allow us to access this content underscore HTML over in our content with media component and replace this div with a self-closing one and then dangerously set enter HTML with our HTML prop being our block dot content HTML. Now we only want this block to show if we have that content. So I'm going to set another conditional check here to make sure that this div is only rendering if we have something for block.contenthtml. So now that we have the left condition set, we can do the right condition. So if block text position is right, then we'll want to return this same content, but we're going to reverse the order and have content be second. Now this component is ready to go. So let's do our table of contents real quick and I'm gonna fast forward through that. So feel free to pause the video now and try it on your own. Now that we have our two components done, we can go to our index.tsx that will include our render blocks function. So first we're gonna create a new const called block components and set that equal to an object containing all the blocks you'd like to check against. So we're going to use the slugs of each of our blocks. So we have table of contents and then we also have content with media. And now we're going to import each of these block components into this object. So we're going to import table of contents and we're gonna make sure we do it from the component. And we're gonna do the same thing here with content with media, which I actually named content with media block. You'll then need to export a new const called render blocks. And you're going to assign it the type react.fc, open up some angled brackets and then open up some curly braces. And you're gonna pass in the blocks prop here. And so for our post collection, we first need to make sure that we import our post type and then assign that type to our blocks prop with where our blocks are stored, which is in block test. So I can add that. And then we're gonna set this equal to props, open up an arrow function, and then deconstruct blocks from props. And now here I notice I have this content with media in the preview of what's included in blocks, but I don't see my table of contents. And that's because for the post type, I only have content with media listed in our blocks. So if I go over to our post config, I can come to our block field and then I just need to add table of contents here. So now after I generate types, I can come back to our render blocks and I now see table of contents as available inside this blocks preview. From there, you'll want to check that the document has blocks. We'll do that by setting a const called has blocks, set that equal to blocks, check if the blocks is an array, and then also check if blocks has a length greater than zero. If all of that is true, we can then return the blocks that are available. We'll check if has blocks, and then open up the if statement. Then we'll return a React fragment, which we'll need to import from React. And this is going to include our blocks.map 
and it's going to have a block argument as well as an index argument. So in here, we're going to open up an arrow function. So we have curly braces there and we're going to check for a deconstructed const called block type and set this equal to our block. Then we'll check if block type and block type is in the block components object above and then open that up. If all of that is true, we'll create a new const called block and set that equal to check within our block components object for block type. So we do that by doing block components and in the square brackets, block type. So if that block exists, so if block here, we can then return a div with a key of index to make sure we're satisfying React's rules. And then we can add our block component there with the spread operator for block. So it takes all the props of block. And so you'll notice that this block component has a type issue and that's because all of our blocks are going to have different types. Since it's an expected error, we can just do TS expect error and then that error will go away. If there is no block by that type, we should return null. And if there are no blocks at all, we should return null. Now that our render blocks component is completed, we can go to our front end folder and open our page.tsx. Once there, you'll see that we have our payload object already initialized, and we can export a default async function we'll call page and then open that up and put our payload object in there. Now we're going to find our post. So we're going to do post query and we're going to await our payload object, do find, open up the options and we're gonna search on the collection posts. We're going to limit it to only one post where the slug is equal to blog one, which we just know exists in our collection. From there, we can get our post, which is going to be our post query dot docs with the first index. So we're only getting the first post. And since this is a post query of only one post being returned, this is going to return our only document. And then we can return our render blocks and then pass in our post dot block test, which is where we know our blocks are stored. We can save this, spin up our server by doing pnpm dev. And then once we're in, we can go to localhost and we see that our content is here. We have test at the top and then an image beneath it. And if we wanted to switch that order, we could log in to our admin UI, go to blog posts, find blog one, and then just switch the order here. When I hit save, come back here and refresh, I then see test down here at the bottom. Now I just breezed through how to use Payload's local API. And that's because I already have a video done on how to use Payload CMS's local API. If you don't know anything that I just did in that section of the video, please go back and watch that video and then rewatch this section on how to query your documents. Blocks are a powerful and flexible way to build your pages. In this video, we went over how to get blocks up and running quickly and simply on your front end. In the next video, we'll go over how to render lexical content on the front end instead of converting it to HTML. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others who might also find it useful. Check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss a video. I'll see you on the next one.